So another qualifying session in 2019 does not disappoint as today we had qualifying for the 2019 Hungarian Grand Prix and it was fantastic yet again and in today's video we are going to be looking at what happened exactly in qualifying for all the teams and drivers today in this video but first let's get into the results of said qualifying session so taking his first ever pole position is Max Verstappen for Red Bull Racing. Second place is Valtteri Bottas. Third, Lewis Hamilton. Then Charles Leclerc, Sebastian Vettel, Pierre Gasly. And then completing the top 10, Lando Norris, Carlos Sainz, Roman Grosjean and Kimi Raikkonen. Knocked out in Q2, Nico Hülkenberg, Alexander Albon, Daniel Kvyat, Antonio Giovinazzi and Kevin Magnussen. And then knocked out in Q1, Russell, Perez, Ricardo, Stroll and Kubica. But first, let's get into the teams and first go to Mercedes who uh, did not have a good day because coming into qualifying, they would have been expecting and coming into this weekend, they would have been expecting a pole position for one of their drivers and they did not get it. Their car didn't look bad. But compared to Max Verstappen, it just wasn't good enough. So, yeah, not good for them. Valtteri Bottas, great, great job to out-qualify Lewis Hamilton around this circuit by about a tenth and a half of a second. So great by Valtteri Bottas. Lewis Hamilton, again, compared to his teammate, Lewis, uh, compared to his teammate Valtteri Bottas, just not quite doing enough when it mattered to get... Uh, onto the front row ahead of Valtteri Bottas or even get pole position. So shame for Hamilton, but of course there is a race tomorrow. Mercedes are absolutely going to be competitive for the race win, but beating Max Verstappen and Red Bull in their current form as a partnership with Honda is going to be very, very tough indeed. Also, again, shout out to Valtteri Bottas for out-qualifying Lewis Hamilton again. And I think Valtteri does deserve a lot of credit for, again, providing another great qualifying performance. Next up is Ferrari. Even though they're P4 and P5, and that was to be expected, I think Ferrari can look at today as a good day because, say a month ago, coming to this Grand Prix, I would have thought Ferrari would be about three quarters of a second off pole position, but they're only just under half a second off Oh, and if you have been looking closely at this Grand Prix this weekend, you'll know that Ferrari brought some updates to their barge board area and also side pods. So clearly those have worked and Ferrari look about a quarter of a second closer to Mercedes and Red Bull when it comes to the aerodynamic balance of their car. Great news for Ferrari. It won't allow them to be on the podium tomorrow or anything like that but it's great news going forward into the rest of the season in terms of can ferrari you know get that final race win or, or get a first race win of 2019 but yeah for tomorrow unless someone ahead has a bad start or a liability issue i don't think ferrari will finish on the podium because their tire wear is still not that good but they are closer aerodynamically than they were and for Ferrari I think that has to be took as a positive but now on to Red Bull and getting his first ever pole position Max Verstappen and he absolutely deserved it drove so so well today and for the entire weekend and right now you have to say is driving absolutely out of his skin and is for me again the best driver of 2019 so far he he did so well considering he didn't have a pole position to his name before the session got underway he did so well in q3 to bang in two great laps to get pole position so great great job by max verstappen and with the way max is when it comes to race performances and with his current form and again red bull's current form i'm not sure they can be beaten tomorrow but of course we'll see in the Grand Prix, but great job by Max Verstappen. Pierre Gasly, P6, almost nine tenths of a second off his teammate. And again, I'm sorry, that is not good enough. He should be at least 
half a second closer and he should have been out qualifying Charles Leclerc and Sebastian Vettel in the two Ferrari cars. He absolutely should have been. No excuses whatsoever because the Red Bull uh, car is clearly faster than the Ferrari around this circuit. And you should never be that far behind your teammate. There's no excuse. I don't care if your teammate is Max Verstappen or an Ayrton Senna or a Michael Schumacher or a Lewis Hamilton. No excuses. If you're that far off your teammate, you're not good enough. And again, Gasly, miles off his teammate, not good enough, should have been on the second row. And he lines up in P6 and he is destined to finish there because he's simply in that car, not getting enough out of the car and is not quick enough. But for Max Verstappen and Red Bull at the front, it's looking good for possibly another race win. Now into the midfield. First off, Renault. Poor day for Renault. Daniel Ricciardo, P18. I'm not quite sure as of yet whether Daniel Ricciardo, when he got held up slightly by Sergio Perez on the beginning of his final lap in Q1, I'm not sure yet, again, what quite happened. But even if Ricciardo got into Q2, I don't think Daniel would have finished that high up anyway because the Renault car simply isn't quick enough. It's not as quick as the McLaren. It doesn't look as quick to me as the Haas or even the Alpha at times. It's not a quick car, and they look as though they are going backwards and not forwards. Terrible day for Renault. Holkenberg did well to out-qualify his teammate and be in P11, I think, honestly. And of course, for tomorrow's race, he will have a free choice of tyres to start on, and he is the first driver to do that. So that's great for him and he is on the clean side of the grid but Renault should not be in p11 and p18 at race 12 of a 2019 formula one season they should be where mclaren are and let's get on to mclaren because Renault have been just so so poor so mclaren p7 and p8 very very good very good for mclaren and as long as they can finish there then they should absolutely wrap up and seal P4 in the constructors because they've already started building quite a handsome gap to the other midfield teams. And if they can continue with the pace they've had so far this weekend, then they should be able to wrap it up. And if there's a retirement ahead, who knows? They might score more than 10 points um, in the constructors if both cars are up there. So... Great by McLaren, Lando and Carl Austin so well. And also, they were both only about four tenths of a second behind Pierre Gasly. So for me, very good by McLaren. And again, considering that they are apparently not really updating this car anymore because they're fully focusing on 2020, McLaren are looking pretty good for the rest of the season and also 2020. But now let's get on to the rest of the teams. Alpha and Mayo. Um, Alpha not as good as I thought they would be at the end of qualifying. Kimi Raikkonen and P10. I don't think he'll be massively disappointed. Probably slightly disappointed because Kimi was looking as though he could be in the top eight. But not to be uh, for Kimi Raikkonen. Antonio Giovinazzi had quite a poor session. P14. And it looks as though he will have a penalty for blocking Lance Stroll in Q1. So, yeah, poor session for Antonio. But Kimi P10, I guess at least they have a car in the top 10, which is something they didn't have this time last year when they were Sauber. So, I guess Alpha are looking good. But um, I think Kimi was hoping to be a bit higher up. But for the race tomorrow, considering Roman Grosjean is P9, who we'll get onto in a moment, I think Kimi is probably going to finish in the top eight or nine because I think Kimi's race pace will be pretty good and get him into that type of position. So still looking good, I think, for Alpha Romeo with Kimi Raikkonen at least. Next up, Haas, Roman Grosjean, great performance, I have to say. P9, he was great for the really uh, 90 or 95% of qualifying. And when it comes to saving... His Formula 1 career, he's absolutely doing it at the moment. So great by Roman Grosjean. And hopefully the Haas can have good race pace tomorrow. We'll see in that Australia spec Haas car. Kevin Magnussen though, I don't know what happened on his final lap. But P15 is really not good. And Kevin 
of course, is in the new spec past car. And I think it has been proven quite clearly in the last two or three races that the upgrades that Haas brought to their car after Australia simply haven't worked because Roman is a top 10 runner in the Australia spec car. So I think that they've got to, after the summer break, put Kevin in the Australia spec car and try to figure out why they're so quick with that spec of car and try and develop uh, that car in that type of way. So... Great for Roman and good for Haas. Hopefully the race pace is good. I'm not sure it will be, but we'll see in the race tomorrow, of course. Next up is Toro Rosso, who for me did well. P12 and P13, they probably could have finished out of Hulkenberg because I think Toro Rosso do have probably a better car, only slightly than Renault. Then maybe they could have done better. But yeah, P12 and P13, pretty good. Well done to Albon for responding to his crash in practice too so well. I will admit I'm a bit surprised by Daniel Kvyat for being behind his teammate. But I think the team will be happy, you know, with their result. And going in the race tomorrow, I think if they can get a good enough start and start on the right tyres... I think they can nick a point for sure. I absolutely think they can nick a point. And it would be great to see them continue finishing in the points. Because of course they finished in the points in Silverstone. And then at Hockenheim they had 23 points from both drivers. So hopefully they can continue scoring points in Formula 1 in 2019. Next up Racing Point. Even though they have brought the second half of their B-spec car, uh, Racing Point this weekend have not been quick. And in qualifying, they had probably the slowest midfield car, maybe the slowest car completely, because Russell and the Williams was ahead of them. So really bad for Racing Point. This has to be probably their worst qualifying session of the season, considering the updates that they've just brought and you know, how everything is going right now. So terrible for Racing Point. Hopefully, they can somehow improve on that tomorrow. But from where they're starting, P17 and P19, I don't see how Racing Point can get near the points, no pun intended. Now, usually, I don't get onto Williams because they're always at the back. But Williams, with their new updates to their car that they brought to Hockenheim, that has allowed George Russell to out-qualify the two racing points, his teammate by over a second, and Daniel Ricciardo in a Renault. Wow, what a performance. That might be the best performance of 2019 or the best performance we've seen for a long time because that Williams car, as you guys know, is at times like a caravan. It's so, so bad. So for him to get in that position, it just shows you that Williams are improving, yes, but Russell is a superstar driver. And if you put him in a top car, guarantee you Russell would be a race winner because that guy has something special. He absolutely does. So great there by Russell, hopefully. If uh, Perez, Stroll, Ricardo can make the way out the field, hopefully he can as well. Who knows? Maybe Russell could get near the points. But guys, that's it for the qualifying review. And with this type of grid we have for tomorrow's race, I think we are definitely in for a another very good race in 2019.